Please invite Ms. Reza Khan to the witness table. Thank you. Take your seat. Uh, thank you once again for coming back. I'd like to remind you that you have made an affirmation to tell the truth. The proceedings today is a continuation of the last hearing. You are still bound to your solemn obligation. And if you refuse to answer our questions directly, attempt to prevaricate or willfully mislead the committee by providing false evidence, such behaviour will be an offence and in contempt of the committee. I'll now call Minister Edwin Tong, who has a few questions for you. Good morning, Ms. Khan. Good morning. Since you gave evidence to this committee uh, several weeks ago, uh, we've received some additional evidence on the areas that we touched on when you were giving evidence. That's in the form of oral statements, uh, evidence before this committee, as well as some documentary evidence. I'd like this morning to show them to you and give you an opportunity to respond to them and ask for your views on uh, this evidence that came to us after you had given evidence. Okay? Now, um, and I'll try to refresh your memory as to what you said as well. So if you remember, you let me know, and then we can move quickly. But if not, I'll be very happy to show you the context behind the question that I'll be asking, okay? Now, you remember you, we spoke about what happened on the 8th of August. In context, there was a day on which you met with Mr. Singh, Ms. Lim, and Mr. Faisal at Mr. Singh's home. You recall that? Yes. Yes. And on this occasion, you had admitted the falsehood, the false anecdote to the three of them. And I recall asking you if it was put in very clear terms to them and whether they understood you. And I think you said yes. You recall? Yes. Yes. Now, I'd like to just ask you to read certain passages of your testimony to yourself. If you can please look at the right-hand side, there are several bundles. If you can pick up 2nd of December... And turn, please, to page 87. On the top, second line, you, you're recorded as saying Ms. Pritam Singh's house. You see that? Yeah. Just quickly read this to yourself and let me know when you're done. This page as well as half of the following page, page 88. Uh, yes. Okay. Now, in summary, your evidence was that you went to Mr. Singh's house. You admitted to them that what you said on the 3rd of August, as far as the anecdote was concerned, was false. You said that there was some disappointment, anger, but also a lot of compassion. And at page 87, you said the reaction was that if I were not to be pressed, then the best thing to do would be to retain the narrative that I began in August. And you said in response to my questions, that it means if you can get away with it, we don't need to clarify the lie. Is that correct? You said, I think in the simplest terms, yes, you are correct, and so on. Uh, after that meeting ended, you recall that you then sent a message to Ms. Lowe and Mr. Nathan. The evidence that we've heard so far from Mr. Singh, Ms. Lim, and Mr. Faisal is that the meeting ended around shortly after 12. The meeting was about an hour, hour plus. Was that also your recollection? Uh, yes. So the message that you sent to Mr. Nathan, uh, and which I'd like to show it to you again if you can't remember, was sent at 12.41 p.m. on that day. And if you can leave the page open and just pick up the submission to the COP by Ms. Lowe on the 2nd of December. This is the, the WhatsApp messages, yes. And on the second page at the bottom, you will see the message that 
was extracted as a screenshot and you will see the timing stamped at 12.41 p.m. You recall that? Yeah. Okay. So, leaving that for a moment, subsequent to you giving this evidence, we heard from all three of the persons who were present at the meeting. And I'd like to just show you the evidence that they gave to us. If you can start with the 9th of December transcript, again, on your right-hand side. You have that, Ms. Khan? Yes. yes, please turn to page 8109. You can cast your eye over the next few pages, beginning from 109, which is Mr. Faisal's evidence on what happened on the 8th of August when he, at which he was present. You have that? Yeah. Just cast your eye over the next few pages and let me know when you're ready. Right through to page 115. Okay. okay, thank you, Ms. Khan. Now, Mr. Faisal makes two broad points. He says that after you recounted your experience of, of the sexual assault, he felt very overwhelmed. He used that word many times in the course of his testimony. And he said that as a result of that, there were no further discussions relating to or queries on the admission that you made that you told a lie in Parliament. Mm -hmm. Was that your recollection? No, that's not my recollection. He also says that in his words, there was zero discussion thereafter on the question of the lie and what to do thereafter. Is that your recollection? No, that's not my recollection. So Mr. Faisal, in your views, on, on that basis, you would disagree with him? I think he's downplaying what the discussion was. All right. As far as you can recall, can you give us an account of what happened in relation to the admission that you made about the lie? After I made the admission, um, there was, of course, discussion about my well-being, um, which I think rightly so, because I had just shared a very deeply personal um, experience that I've had. Um, and the discussion that followed was that we would not pursue the matter further um, and like in my message, Mr. Singh used the words, take it to the grave. So the words, take it to the grave, came from Mr. Singh? Yes. Are you very clear about that? Is that your recollection? Yes, I'm very clear. All right. And that's the language that you use in the 
message that you sent to Mr. Nathan and Ms. Lowe at 12.41 p.m.? Yes. Right. It is not a phrase that I would usually use, so All it right. did not come from me. All right. Did he say this in the presence of Ms. Lim and Mr. Faisal? Yes, he did. He did. I understand. Thank you. Now, let me show you what Mr. Singh says. If you can please pick up the bundle dated 10th December. And turn, please, to page 175. If you can, please look at the bottom of the page. I had referred Mr. Singh to the same transcripts of your evidence that I had just showed you a moment ago. And if you can see, I made a reference to 2 December, page 87. Those are the same pages I showed you earlier. And if you can go over the page to 176, you will see around the first one-third of the page, I had read to Mr. Singh your evidence. Do you see that? And I ended by asking him, would you agree with that? Mr. Singh says, completely disagree. And I put to her your next few lines. I said, let me understand the last statement. You see that? Do you see that, Ms. Khan? Yes. Yes. Just read it to yourself. until the portion where Mr. Singh says, I'm saying it's completely untrue and it's a lie. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Singh completely disagrees with your account of what happened at the meeting. Can you give us your response to that? Would you agree with Mr. Singh? He says no. you're lying. I, I mean, I, of course, I disagree completely. I've come here to tell the truth, um, and I've made an oath to do so as well, uh, and, 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 and I've never strayed from that. So if Mr. Singh is saying that he completely disagrees with your account and that your account is a lie, then you would disagree with that. And as far as you're concerned, Mr. Singh would be lying when he says that he disagrees, that it never happened. I'm saying that I'm telling the truth. Can you carry on reading over to page 177? You recall, Ms. Khan, that you also told us that Mr. Singh's initial reaction was that this would be something that would be taken to the Committee of Privileges. You remember that? Yes. And that you said subsequently the position changed. And uh, you then said it was changed in favour of not raising it if you're not pressed, and to leave it alone. Now, can you look at the next few lines of page 177? The first half of the page. Mr. Singh says that that's not correct. There was no discussion that I recall on the Committee of Privileges at that point. So I didn't ask him. So you did not tell her, even initially, that she should go to the Committee of Privileges? Mr. Singh says, not at that point. And he goes on to say, certainly not. The Committee of Privileges, I don't know how she recollects this on 8th August, but that discussion did not take place because her condition was she was not in a condition. Now, did Mr. Singh raise the question of the Committee of Privileges on that occasion on the 8th of August? Yes, his exact words that I can recollect were that my initial um, reaction or my, my initial instinct is to put you through the Committee of Privileges. As far as you recollect, were those Mr. Singh's words? Yes. Yes, and you then told us when you were last year that subsequently that position changed. Can you recollect what words were used as far as you can remember? Uh, once I, um, once the, the discussion developed, um, it was that it was it would be best to see to to it would be best that it not be brought up forever. I cannot remember the exact words. The exact words. Do you remember if either Ms. Lim or Mr. Faisal said anything in this context? No, I cannot remember. Okay. Mr. Singh goes on, if you keep to the same page. And I then asked him at the bottom, near the bottom of this page at 177, and I again read to him, your testimony, 
beginning with the words, 8 August, thank you. So I said the upshot of the meeting. Do you see that? Yes. Yes. And I asked him if you would disagree with that, given his earlier statements. He says, absolutely. So on this account, you would also disagree with Mr. Singh? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Now, we were told by Mr. Singh and uh, Mr. Faisal and Ms. Lim that you left the meeting first. Is that also your recollection? Yes, that is my recollection. Yes. As, as Mr. Singh was walking you out from his home, he mentioned that he had a conversation with you. Do you recollect that? Very briefly. Do you recall what was said? No. Not he, at all. he informed us that he told you as he was walking out that you should tell your father about this and that we will deal with this matter. I'm paraphrasing, but okay. to that effect. Do you recollect that? No, not in the slightest. No. Was there any discussion at that point about whether you should disclose this to your father, to your family? No. No? There at was no the discussion. At the 8th of August meeting? No, not There was at no all. such discussion? Yeah. Right. The impression that uh, I got, at least, from the testimonies of both, in fact, all three, Mr. Faisal, Ms. Lim and Mr. Singh, was that you were very emotionally affected and unable to have a conversation on this issue. Again, can you give us your account of that? If I was not able to have a discussion on this issue, then why would I have been left on my own to make a decision as they have claimed, which is not what happened? They, right. I mean, yes. And to use mental illness as a way to discredit someone, I think... <laughs> is extremely out of line. At the meeting, Mr. Faisal said that after you had calmed down or you had, again, I'm paraphrasing his words, he then proceeded to have a discussion with you on a statement that he had been discussing with you concerning clarification or additions to your speech that you had made just a few days prior to that. Do you remember that? Yes, exactly. So yes. I was of enough sound, of sound mind to have a discussion about that. Was there a long break between your admission and the discussion on the statement? No, it was right after. Was it at the same location? Yes, same location, same time. Right. Can you give us a brief account of what was discussed about your statement? It was discussed that I should... Uh, it was discussed that... It, what was discussed was that um, what were my views on what the statement should look like, um, how I felt as, as a Muslim woman in the community, um, and what... Um, what the statement could look like and that I would be drafting the statement with assistance from party leaders. So some views were exchanged and Mr. Faisal had told us that he had been communicating those views with you by messages prior to the 8th of August. And from what I heard from you, some views were exchanged at that meeting and then you were to take it back and draft the statement. Is that right? Yes. Did you have occasion to clear the draft with any of the other party leaders who were present at the meeting? Uh, I cleared the draft. Uh, yes, I think so. Yeah. Did you discuss the draft on the same day? I assume so because you posted it later that, that day. Yes, we discussed what the content would be. Did you uh, share your draft with either Mr. Faisal, Ms. Lim or Mr. Singh after the meeting, at some point in time after the meeting and before you posted it? Yes. Did they give you comments to it? Uh, yes, they gave some edits here and there. Okay. Now... You uh, were shown earlier the message that you sent to Mr. Nathan Miss Lowe at 12.41pm. Mm -hmm. Can you recall from where you sent this message? Uh, I sent it from the car. Y you drove? Uh, no, I, I can't drive. And uh, so you sent it whilst you were making your way away from Mr. Singh's home? Yes. Now, I'd like to show you uh, Miss... Or perhaps I'll just ask you if you recall. A few days prior to the 8th of August, I think on the 6th or the 7th, pro probably the 7th, you had come to be aware from Ms. Lowe and Mr. Nathan that they were meeting Mr. Singh on the 10th of August. Do you recall that? Yes. Yes, and you had discussed that earlier and I think we heard from Ms. Lowe as well. <coughs> now, you would have known by the 8th of August that Ms. Lowe and Mr. Nathan 
was going to be meeting Mr. Singh shortly after the 8th of August at a meeting at which you would not be present, correct? Correct. Right. And there was an expectation amongst the three of you that this issue concerning the lie, uh, the lie in Parliament about the anecdote, would probably come up, correct? Yes. It eventually transpired that there was some other issue that Mr. Singh wanted to discuss with them. But the evidence we heard from Ms. Lowe is that the issue did arise, albeit briefly, and it was quite clear to Ms. Lowe that Mr. Singh was aware of the lie. Was that also your impression after discussing with Ms. Lowe after 10th of August? Yes. What else did you discuss with Ms. Lowe after he, she, had, she and Mr. Nathan had met with Mr. Singh on the 10th of August? Um, I do not recall that we discussed much about we discussed much about it. Um, just that we would not pursue the matter further. Okay. Just to be complete, Ms. Lim was shown Mr. Faisal's testimony, the same portions I showed you earlier, and she says that she agreed with Mr. Faisal that there was hardly any discussion, if at all, on the question of the lie. Would you agree with that characterization? I think hardly at all, no. All right. Now, I'd like to refer you to now to uh, 3rd of October. You remember that was a visit that Mr. Singh paid to you at your home. Just before that, between the 8th of August and the 3rd of October, did you have any discussion with any of the party leaders about the lie in Parliament and what to do about it? No, we did not. Can you tell us why? I think because we assumed that it will not be brought up again. Okay. So on the 3rd of October, Mr. Singh says, and again I'll paraphrase, that he went to your home because there was a parliamentary sitting the next day. You had been absent the, for the September sitting because of shingles. So this is now an occasion where you will be in Parliament. And he said that he had contemplated that this issue might arise and he went to discuss it with you. Okay, so that's the context of this meeting. Now, I'd like to uh, just re remind you of what you said to this committee. If you can turn to 2nd of December again, your transcripts and... Turn, please, to page 83. You have it, Ms. Khan? Page 83, if you just look at the bottom half of the page. Yes. You said, before the October sitting, I had a conversation, conversation with leader. You see that? Yes. If you just read it to yourself, this page all the way through to the first half of the next page. Okay. This conversation that you had with Mr. Singh, yes. was it just the two of you? Yes, just the two at, of us. At your home? Yes. At that time, were there other people present in your home? Yes. I, w I mean, I would like to clarify that I think when you asked the question, I assumed that it meant who was present in the conversation. Yes. Um, but, but he came with his wife and, and um, like I mentioned, they came because they wanted to drop off some stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From your own household, were there other people present at home? Yes, my mother and, and I think my father and my, my husband and my brother were there as well. Okay. It's just that they were not present at the occasion of the meeting where you had a dialogue and conversation with Mr. Singh? Yes, because we were seated in a corner. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you give us... Uh, Again, the gist of the conversation you had with Mr. Singh, as to the best of your re recollection. Sure. He's, he brought it up because he, he had a feeling that um, it would be brought up in Parliament again, and that if I were to stick to the narrative, if I were to stick to my position, there, there would be no judgment from him. Okay. 
Now, I will ask you some questions from Mr. Singh's testimony, but I'd like to show you what Ms. Lowe said about this meeting. Uh, again, to give you the context, Ms. Lowe was not present at this meeting on the 3rd of October, but she gave testimony that on the 12th of October, when she and Mr. Nathan met with Mr. Singh, Mr. Singh had recounted what he said to you on the 3rd of October to both of them. Mm. And I'm showing you her statements as she recollects it directly from Mr. Singh. Okay? Uh, the same bundle, 2nd of December. And if you could please turn to page um, 74. Oh, no, sorry, I, I, I'm mistaken. I think it's page 23, sorry. Again, bottom one third of the page, beginning from Ms. Lowe saying, this is information that I have that was shared with me after 4th October. Do you see that? Yes. Are you there? Okay. So just read that to yourself right through to half of the following page. Okay. Okay. At page 24, just to round up the point, Ms. Lowe said, I don't know if they discussed what response she should give. As I said, it was relayed to me that they had a conversation and that conversation was that he had a feeling that she would be pressed about the issue again and his res response to that was that he would not judge Ms. Raisha Khan. So that was Ms. Lowe's uh, it, uh, impression from her own conversation with Mr. Singh. Uh, can you give us your comments on that? How would you res would that be consistent with how you saw it? Would this would this account go against what you said? Give us a response. I think it is consistent with what I've said, um, but I would add that he did not give any directive to clarify the uh, lie in Parliament. Okay. Now, Miss Lim came before this committee again, after you had given evidence. And she also gave evidence, both orally as well as uh, with reference to some documents, which I'd like to show you. Uh, if you can just leave the bundles there where it is, and please pick up uh, from the transcripts of 13 December. Again, let me give you some orientation, Ms. Khan. On the 29th of November, you asked for a meeting before the DP. You remember? You, you gave us some evidence of that as well. Yes. And you had asked for a meeting because the first meeting had raised questions of your general work and performance as an MP, and yes. you wanted an opportunity to address that. You recall? Yes. Okay, so this was, I think, a meeting on the 29th of November in the morning. Ms. Lim had taken notes of that meeting. And she told this committee that she wrote it in the first person. So whoever was speaking, she would try as verbatim as possible to record those words. And she also told us that she took notes contemporaneously in her handwriting. So I'd like to show that to you. Sure. If you can pick up the submission made by Ms. Lim. Do you have a copy? Can I have one? Okay. 
Sorry, Ms. Khan. The clerk will assist you with one more copy, okay? Thank you. Is that a copy for Miska? Thank you. Miska, before you are the documents submitted by Miss Lim when she came before this. COP. That was on the 13th of December, after you gave evidence. So if you can just quickly cast your eye over the next few pages, you will see a hand, some handwritten notes, and they are then accompanied by a typed up transcript of the handwritten notes. And you see the first meeting was on the 8th of November. That's the first occasion you had with the DP, correct? Yeah. And then down the page, you will see that there's another transcript of a meeting on the 29th of November, starting at 10.30 a.m. Do you have that? Uh, okay. Yes. And that's accompanied by Ms. Lim's contemporaneous handwritten notes of the same meeting, which was then typed up. So I'd like to refer you to the second last page of the handwritten notes, at the bottom you'll see a 12, page 12. Do you have it? It, sh it should be towards the end of that bundle that the clerk had handed you earlier. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, let me just show you the portion that appears at the bottom half of this page through to the next page. And uh, then I'll show you the parts which are typed up, which is makes for easier reading. I wanted to show you that this is how it appears in the handwritten notes submitted by Ms. Lim. And if you can then go to the typed up notes of the same meeting and go to the last page, The last page has a reference called binder page 17 at the bottom of the, of the page. Okay. Okay. So this is from Ms. Lim's handwritten notes. P.S., which is Mr. Singh. Before October session, I met you and told you it was your call. Did need to tell the truth in Parliament occur to you? R.K., yes, but consumed with guilt plus own experience. Thought it wouldn't come up. P.S., can't lie, right? RK, yes. P.S., where do you place party in decision-making? Now, Mr. Singh confirmed that Ms. Lim's notes accurately reflected what he told you at the DP on the 29th of November. Yes. Is that also your recollection? Yes, sorry, I was reading this. Um, can you repeat your oh, question? Sure, take your time. Thank Would you like you. to read the the preceding page as well, so that you uh. have the context.
Okay. Okay. Now, Mr. Singh has confirmed that Ms. Lim's notes accurately capture what was said by him to you at this meeting on the 29th of November at the DP. Was that also your recollection, that he said these words? No. Can you give us an account of what was said to you? That if I were to continue the narrative, I would not be judged. That's what he said to me. That's what, he, that's what you told us he said to you on the yeah. 3rd of October, yes. right? On uh, the 29th of November, yes. this is a different occasion. You're now before the DP. And this, these notes record what was said by each of the parties present at the DP. And Ms. Lim's notes record Mr. Singh as saying, before October session, I met you and told you it was your call. They need to tell the truth in Parliament occurred to you, and so on. I'm asking you about the 29th of November now. Okay. Do you recall if these words were said to you on that occasion? Yes, I recall this. You recall this exchange? Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Singh, when asked about this exchange, says that you've got to see the words in the context of the entire discussion. And he pointed us to several other parts of the conversation. But he also agreed that the phrase, it's your call, on its own, would mean that Ms. Khan, yourself, could make a choice as to whether to tell the truth or to lie if she was asked on 4th of October. Now, in this context, can you let us know if those words were used in the same way on the 3rd of October at your meeting? If so, can you try to recollect the gist? If not, can you recollect what was said by Mr. Singh on the 3rd of October when he met with you at your home? It was not, this was not said the way it is here in, 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 in the transcript. Based on this recording? Yes. Okay, can you explain then what was said and how it was put across to you? It, it's been the same that I've, I don't have anything else to add. Okay, so the, would I be correct to say that the words in this transcript on the 29th of November suggest that it's your choice to make? Yeah. But the impression and the words conveyed by Mr. Singh on the 3rd of October did not give you a choice. Was that, uh, am I accurately summarizing your evidence? He did not put forth that it was my choice to make. And so what did he say to you? He said that if I were to continue the narrative, he would not judge me. All right. He and did not put it forth as saying you can either tell the truth or you can continue with the lie. Okay. And did he, uh, on that occasion, tell you that you should tell the truth in Parliament? No. Now, let me um, put to you what Mr. Singh told us, again, subsequent to you giving evidence. If I can ask you to pick up Mr. Singh's transcripts, that is dated 10th of December. Please go to page 29. Or you can start at the bottom of 28 for the context. Start with my question with your wife. Can you tell me what happened on this occasion? So read that into the next page, 29. Yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Singh says, and I'm paraphrasing his evidence, that he says he sat with you and told her, meaning yourself, I'm not sure what's going to happen with the anecdote, but it's possible that a clarification will come up. Somebody may ask you something about it, and he says that it is important that you take responsibility and take ownership of the issue. Did he say these words to you? No, that's, this is the first time I've heard the, him say these words. And then he goes on to say, and I did say, and she started getting a bit uncomfortable when I said that, and then I told her I will not judge you. Did he say that in this way? Not in this way, no. 
and I was never uncomfortable. You were not uncomfortable about the conversation? No, I was not. I was in my own home. Yes. He then goes on to explain that I will not judge you, and I'm reading from page 29, meant I will not judge you, meaning yourself, Ms. Khan, if you take responsibility and ownership. That was the gist of the conversation. I didn't get the sense that she was going to be uncomfortable with telling the truth. Why would, it, why would I be uncomfortable with, with him asking me to tell the truth? Did he ask you to tell the truth on this occasion? No, he did not. If you go further down the page uh, and into page 30 and 31, Just quickly cast your eye over the next few pages and I will ask you some questions. Okay. So at, at 30, he says, was there anyone in your home? No, there was not. And he says, I think she has told a lie. That's not true. I think you covered that earlier. Yes. Right? What you meant yes. was there was people present at home, but the conversation you had with Mr. Singh was a private one. No one yes. else was present in that conversation. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Then at the bottom of page 30, I showed him what you had said. And he says, I saw the transcripts. I was shocked about it. And I want to relay to you that, that, is, that this is not true. And then I went further into what you had said. You see that at the bottom of page 30? Yes. And then at the top of page 31, not at that point in time, no. Not on 3rd October, no. So you disagree with this? Absolutely. If this is what Ms. Khan said, you would say she's lying. Answer by Mr. Singh, absolutely. Can you give us your response to that? That I would not lie on oath. So you would disagree with Mr. Singh's evidence yes. on this? Yes. And you stand by what you said to this committee previously on the 2nd of December, as well as what you just said to us here about what happened on the 3rd of October? Yes. All right. When Mr. Singh left y your home on the 3rd of October, was there any discussion about what you might be saying on the 4th of October? Was there a draft of what you might say? Was there a discussion on how you might approach the issue if it came up? No. Now, I'd like to now move to the 4th of October. Uh, on this day, Parliament did sit. Let me just recap it again. Parliament sat at 11am that day. By 12.30, PQs were over, and Minister Shanmugam stood up to make a short ministerial statement. You were present in the chamber at that point in time. After you gave evidence, we received a document. Uh, I think it was from yourself, if I'm not mistaken, on the 7th of December. And uh, it contained a WhatsApp message. I'd like to show it to you. Or if you do recall it, then I, I, I wanted to trouble you. On um, the 4th of October at 12.34 p.m., a few minutes after Minister Shanmugam stood up to speak, you sent Mr. Singh a message. What should I do, Pritam? Yes. Do you recall that? I recall that. Okay. Why did you ask this of Mr. Singh at that point in time? Because I was unsure of what to do. What were you thinking he might say to you? Uh, who, are, who are you referring to? Mr. Singh, sorry. Mr. Singh. I, I thought that he would say, just continue, and because that was the conversation that we had the night before. Mm -hmm. But he didn't reply to you? No, he didn't. Okay, I'd like to show you an excerpt from the video, the footage. Um, can... Can the clerks assist me, please? I'll just put up a short excerpt of what happened on the 4th of October. Uh, 
thank you, Minister, for the clarifications. Um, like I said, it did happen three years ago, and I haven't been successful getting in touch with the person that I accompanied. Um, and, you know, with regards to confidentiality, I would prefer it for it to remain that way. Thank you. to the extent that Ms. Khan knows them. Ms. Khan, you facilitate the investigation by police to check. Thank you. I do not know the identity of the police officers. But questions on police station, date, etc. Uh, with regards to confidentiality with the survivor, I would not like to reveal any of this information. Thank you. So they're talking about the police station. That's got nothing to do with the confidentiality of the survivor. It's Ms. Khan. Uh, ministers are asking about the identity of the individual. I understand, but uh, with regards to confidentiality, I, wouldn't like, I, will, I will not be revealing the, any other information. Thank you. So I have to say that perhaps the speaker has the power to direct answers since the matter has been raised. And to use a, I'll ask for a direction to be given. We be told which police station in the month, and uh, if not the date, at least a month in which police station. Uh, Ms. Khan, I think that's a fair question. Would you like to respond, or are you holding to the same position? The reason is that uh, certain allegations have been made, which I think are fair and uh, serious, and the police, I understand, would like to follow up to check to make sure that uh, they can rectify the situation. So. Any leads would be useful without divulging the name of the lady concerned. Thank you. I would still like to remain for it to remain confidential. Thank you. Okay, let me stop yes. it there. No. Miss Khan, you I could see that you brought your phone with you to yeah. the podium to speak. And that you had looked at it from time to time. Can you tell us what you were looking for? I was looking for an answer from Mr Singh. And when there was no answer forthcoming, you gave those answers. Can you tell us why? Uh, because this was a discussion that we had on uh, 3rd of October, right. the evening before. Now, Mr. Singh then replied to you shortly after this exchange was over. Again, do you recall it? Or if not, I can show it to you. I recall, recall. it. Uh, in just, again to paraphrase, he said, we'll speak about it later and to keep Chairman and himself informed. Did you have any occasion to meet with Mr. Singh? I know you did at about 11pm that evening, but prior to that, did you have occasion to meet with him or speak to him? Uh, I did he don't call recall. you? I don't recall, but I recall that we met that evening. Right. Now, Ms. Lim said that she met with you yes. earlier that day in the afternoon. Do you recall that? Yes. She says that it was around 2pm. Yeah. Can you tell us where you met? Uh, we met in the LO office. Was Mr. Singh present? Uh, no. Now, she said she wanted to meet with you for broadly two reasons. One, to ascertain your emotional state. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to give you her view that you should seek legal advice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Again, do you broadly recall those as being the topics of discussion? Yes. How long was this meeting? Uh, I think it was very short, maybe about 10, 15 minutes. I'd like to show you what Ms. Lim said about that meeting. If I may ask you to pick up Ms. Lim's transcripts again. So if you go to page 26, at the bottom she says, I had two purposes, what I just summarised to you earlier. And then she proceeds to give an account of it over the next page or two. Can you just quickly cast your eye over it? Yes.
Yes. Okay. Now, at the middle of page 27, Ms Lim says that she suggested to you to get legal advice. You did get legal advice thereafter, did you not? Yes, I did. Yes. She then goes on to say that when I asked her, did you ask her, meaning yourself, why did you repeat the untruths? Ms Lim said, I didn't ask her that. That's also your recollection? Yes. Did Ms Lim ask you, why did you lie? No, she didn't. Did Ms Lim ask you, why not tell the truth? No, she didn't. Did Ms Lim say that there was a sitting the next day on the 5th of October and you could clarify the lie on the next day? To no, you? she didn't. Did Ms Lim ask you what you discussed with Mr Singh? Uh, no, she didn't. I don't think she was aware that we met. Right. Now, um, one of the reasons which Mr Singh and Ms Lim and to a lesser extent, Mr. Faisal offered as to why there was no timeline for you to come to Parliament to clarify the lie. Yeah. Was that you had needed to square the position with your family first, to tell them about it, to give you an opportunity to break the news to them first. That was what they had told us. Mm -hmm. Now, on this occasion, on the 4th of October, did Min Ms. Lim ask you if you had told your family about the sexual assault and whether they were aware that that was the reason why, or at least one of the reasons why you had then made up the anecdote in Parliament? No, they didn't. On any occasion, did Ms Lim, Mr Faisal or Mr Singh ask you if your family was aware? Any occasion prior to 4th of October? No, they didn't. Only at the uh, 8th of August meeting. 8th of August, when you first recounted yeah. the experience. Yes. Yeah. Because they asked me who else knew. Okay, I understand that. Ms Lim, when she was asked why it was not feasible to clarify the lie at the very next sitting, which is on the 5th of October, she gave this reason. If I can refer you to page 29, 29 of the transcripts, just read from the bottom question which I had framed through to the following page. Okay. Okay. Now, Miss Lim, in summary, when I asked her why it was not possible to clarify the lie of the next day, said that uh, it's possible, but it would be a rush to do the clarification on the 5th of October because they would need time to go and ascertain from you exactly what you want to say and whether it can withstand scrutiny. Now, eventually, you did clarify the lie on the 1st of November. And there was a process by which you looked at the draft and revised the draft. So in that context, would you agree with this statement? I think if I was told to clarify on the 5th of October, I would have. So the haste that she talks about could be done if you were told to clarify the lie on the next day. Yes. Did you think that there was any impediment in, in terms of whether your family was aware or otherwise? It, w it would have been one conversation with my parents. 
Um, I think the issue would have been if I were to include the personal anecdote in my clarification or not. But from your recollection, this issue of asking you to clarify the lie on the 4th of October itself or the next day on the 5th of October did not come up in this conversation? No. Now, later that evening, you did meet with Mr. Singh and Ms. Lim again at about 11.15pm. We had from you and also from, uh, I think from yourself, a series of messages exchanged at around 11.15. Do you recall that meeting? Yes. This meeting was also at the LO's office? Yes. With Ms. Lim and Mr. Singh present? Yeah. Now, Mr. Singh told us it was a very short meeting. Would that also be your recollection? Yes. Mr. Singh told us that when you arrived at the meeting, you had a day's look and that you said these words, and I quote, perhaps there's another way, that is, to tell the truth. Do you recall making this statement? Yes, I did. Uh, he says that you were dazed and somewhat disoriented. Would you agree with that? No, I would not agree with that. Can you explain what you meant with those, by those words when you said it to Mr. Singh? I meant, I meant that perhaps it is, I, I should take the opportunity to clarify and tell the truth. When you say there's another way, what do you mean by that? Because when someone says there's another way, yeah. it contemplates that there is a path or two choices. So can you explain to us in that context what you mean? As opposed to continuing the narrative. Which was your impression from the conversation of the day before? Yes. So you approached Mr. Singh with these words. What was his response? Yeah. That if that was what I wanted to do, I should have done it on the 4th of October. What did you uh, intend or hope to get from Mr. Singh by making this statement to him? I was hoping for a clear directive to, do, to either tell the truth or... Yeah, in the context of what had happened on the 4th of October? Yes. Yes. In the context of what he said on the 3rd of October as well. Mm -hmm. Of course, by this time on the 4th of October, you had just seen an exchange yes. that you had, and um, it was left off as there'll be further investigations with the police, right? And it was in that context that Ms. Lim then says, get legal advice, presumably because the police were going to be asking questions of you. Yes. So... Was this statement made in that context, having taken one path from what you had said on the 3rd of October, and now with what has just happened on the 4th of October, you are asking Mr. Singh for his view on whether there should be another way? Yes. Do, do I summarise it correctly? Yes. Is there anything else you want to add to this? Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would like to add that again, He's trying to paint this picture of me as being emotionally or uh, mentally unstable, which again I think is is completely out of line. And and um, hopefully there's a testimony that would say you know that I'm of sound mind. Okay, your recollection of that meeting on the in the evening, the night of fourth of October, you were not upset or emotionally. Yeah, okay, upset is perhaps a wrong word. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, to characterize it as you not being in control of your mental emotions or your emotions and your mental state being unstable and being emotional. Uh, I think he said that you were also crying. I was stressed, but I was not crying. Yeah. All right. He told us that his reaction, or at least one of his reactions to what you said, was to say the words, but look at the choice you've made. Mm -hmm. Do you recall that? No, I do, you don't. do not recall that. Okay. Miss Lim's account of this is similar. And mm -hmm. she says that uh, she remembers you talking about another path, which is honesty. And that she said that Mr. Singh responded by asking you if you hadn't already chosen that path by what you had done in Parliament that day. Mm -hmm. Do you recall that? Yes. And what was your response to that? I didn't have a response to that. Can you tell us why? I think because I was shocked because we I had that conversation with Mr. Singh on the 3rd of October and there was no intention or, or directive from his part to tell the truth 
I think I would have expected that someone would say that to me if there was a conversation around telling the truth. Mr. Singh's evidence before this committee was that on the 3rd of October was yes. that he said to you to take ownership and responsibility and that he won't judge you. He also said that he didn't use the words go and tell the truth or clarify the lie in Parliament, but that's what he meant and he was in no doubt that when he left the meeting at your home, that was what he had conveyed to you. I mean, I've, he never said the words take ownership or responsibility to me on that night. The words were, as you said earlier, continue the narrative and I won't judge you. Yes. Are you very clear about that? I'm very clear about that. Now, if you was going to clarify the lie in Parliament, which is something you eventually did on the 1st of October, uh, 1st of November, I beg your pardon, and you had come round to that view by around the 12th of October, based on the evidence that we heard earlier, there would have been steps necessary to have been taken in preparation of that, correct? Yes, correct. And uh, would you have involved Ms. Slow and Mr. Nathan in those steps? Yes, I would have. Why? Because they've helped me from the beginning with some of the speeches I've had to draft and um, they've, they understand the complexities of the issue, especially about me bringing up my own experience. Would you also have appreciated that a clarification of a lie that was said in Parliament and by this time it was two and a half, three months ago, mm -hmm. that would have a significant adverse impact? Yes. And uh, was Miss Lowe and Mr. Nathan discussing this with you? Yes, they were discussing about um, what the negative impacts might be after I make the speech. And, and they were very concerned over my welfare. Um, and, and they asked permission from um, Mr. Singh to take over a lot of my social media accounts and, and some of my emails. Mm -hmm. Was this in contemplation of the adverse publicity that will arise after 1st November? Yes. Right. Now, can you give us an account of what steps were taken and how many meetings you had from the 12th of October all the way through until the 1st of November when you actually um, made the clarification in Parliament? We had two meetings. One was with the leaders of the party. One was with Ms. Lim, Mr. Singh, and, and um, Mr. Manap. And one was just the, two of, uh, the, the three of us. How many drafts did you look at and exchange? Do you recall offhand? Uh, I can't recall, but I think there were three or four drafts. Did Mr. Singh and Ms. Lim give their views to you on, on the drafts? Yes, they did. I think we had one more meeting as well at, um, I think for the final draft, we had another meeting at Mr. Singh's house. All right. Thank you, Ms. Khan. Mr. Chairman, I've got no further questions now. Any other members have questions? Mr. Dennis Tan. Hi, Ms. Khan. Hi. Just a very few questions, just more to clarify. Um, can you remember the um, the speech you made in Parliament on the 3rd August? Did anybody help you to prepare the draft? Can you remember? I worked on it primarily on my own, but uh, because there was a lot of research to do with, with the work, but um, some volunteers contributed here and there. Do these volunteers uh, include Ms. Lo Peying or Mr. Yudish Nathan? For this particular speech, both of them did not assist. Did you um, check with them the draft before you uh, before you posted it on uh, the portal? Not this particular draft, no. Thank you. Um, you told the disciplinary panel that you had 
post-traumatic post stress syndrome and dissociation. Um, can I ask you... Uh, uh, can I clarify that point? Sure. I, I mentioned that I might... So the I mentioned that the therapist said that I might have symptoms of post-traumatic dis, um, PTSD. Um, and when I was asked what symptoms there were, I said one of the symptoms was dissociation. Dis association, um, but I never said that this was something that I was going through. Okay. <clears throat> who, uh, who is this therapist that you are referring to? Uh, the one that sent in the, the, uh, the one that sent in the, I don't know if it's a recommendation or the one that sent in the letter to say that I'm physically fit to continue work. So this was in uh, in the recent months, right? Yes. Okay. Um, prior to... Actually, since the sexual assault uh, incident uh, in, I think, 2008, um, and until August this year, have you ever sought treatment? Uh, for any counselling, any uh, any help from any doctor regarding any trauma that you might have gone through? I did see a therapist here and there, and I also went to this woman's group that I mentioned. Um, this therapist that you mentioned, uh, was it in, is it in Singapore? Yes, it's in Singapore, but we did not particularly explore this issue as I thought that I had recovered from it. D did you remember how long ago was that? Um, I saw someone on and off, I think, throughout the few years, throughout the two years, two and a half, three years. Last three years? Yes. Did you ever share this with uh, Dr. Chok, whom, you, whom I believe you met uh, in the last few days from yes. IMH? Yes, I did. Are you uh, able to share with the committee what did your lawyers advise you um, on the issue of whether or not to respond to the police uh, requests for information or interview? Sure. They shared with me that um, if any clarification were to be made, they should be made in Parliament, but that I should still respond to the police to tell them that this was my view. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, no more questions. Any more questions, anyone? No? Okay. If there are no further questions for now, we'd like to thank you, Ms. Khan, for coming uh, before the committee again. Transcript of the proceedings will be shared with you for verification. Do go through it. If you have any other minor amendments, do make the changes and send the transcripts back to us. Uh, please do note that the transcripts and any evidence given to the committee are not to be disclosed to anyone or published and must be kept strictly confidential until the committee has presented its report to Parliament. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Uh, you, you may withdraw. And uh, I'll Chairman, start. can yes. I say something, please? Yes, you may. <clears throat> I think talking about mental health especially in this day and age, is very sensitive. Um, and to use it to discredit someone, I think, sets back our movement to work on mental health and to, to further, um, and, and, you know, things like even that, that we're doing called Beyond the Label, to encourage people to seek help when they need. That's all I wanted to say. I fully understand. Thank you very much. And for thank you very much for sharing on some of these fairly personal matters as well. Uh, you may withdraw. Uh, Sergeant Adams, uh, do accompany Ms. Khan out. Thank you very much.